Greetings gamers, welcome to part number 50 of my Let's Play Fire Emblem 10 Radiant Dawn. And in today's episode, a lot of really strange things has happened. Have happened uh, with good old Kurth Naga joining the fray. And whatever could that entail? Alencia, what are you doing here? Did Ina and Kurth ask you to bring them to this battle? No, that wasn't the case. Prince Kurth Naga and I ran into each other on our way here. We are actually in Dan to look for Count Bastion Affair. Lucia, you're here too. Of course. I cannot let Her Majesty out of my sight. You know that. Bastion. He'd been so good about sending my, me reports until recently. He was searching for the Black Knight, right? After the Mad King's War, Begnion sent an envoy to investigate war crimes committed during Ashnard's reign. The Black Knight had already left Dan before the Empire's Observer arrived. Where he went rem remains a mystery. That was the last piece of information we received from Bastion. Then he sent word saying that something more important had come up with regards to Crimea. He's been missing ever since. I haven't heard a single word from him. Bastion likes to keep his secrets. He's probably just laying low somewhere. I'm not so sure. We, he, he must have found something important, some new piece of information that he had to pursue. I ordered Jeffrey to watch over Crimea and came here to begin a search for Bastion. It's too dangerous for you and Lucia to travel by yourselves. Why don't you come with us? Everyone would love having you two around. Thank you, Ike. We'll gladly accept the offer. Gaining lots and lots of bonus experience points. Cannot wait to start using it. Queen Alincia and the dragons of Goldoa persuade both armies to accept a temporary truce. The blue light that burns within the medallion grows more fierce with each passing day. To prevent the awakening of the evil trapped within, the fighting must be stopped. However, the Apostle and her army refuse to abandon Seferin's forces in Benyon. Though they hoped the Dayan would cease fighting, they knew battle was inevitable. The bloodshed begins anew. Endgame from Pain Awakening. A blood pact? A piece of parchment forced you into this hopeless war? How terrible. I'm sorry for what you've been th put through, Makaya. The uprising in the Empire continues. The Apostle's people await her return as they fight against the Senate. Casualties mount each day. We know how urgently the Apostle's army needs to reach the Empire. However, if we let their army pass through Dayan, the Senate will surely invoke the Blood Pact and destroy us. But why haven't you told the Apostle's army all this? Surely an alliance between your armies and theirs could overcome the Senate. Attacking the Senate is not an option for us. If it were, we would have marched against them when this all started. If we were to side with Ike, the Senate would use the curse against us. The death of the Senate will not stop the curse. No matter what happens, the end result remains the same. The obliteration of Dayan. What tragedy? Is there any hope for Dayan at all? There is. One person who holds a glimmer of hope for us all. Queen Almeda. Queen Almeda, what do you know about the Blood Pact? You know something, don't you? I saw the look on your face. You noticed something even before Peleus told us about the pact. If there's something you know that we don't, please tell us. I... I know nothing. Mother, please tell the truth. Mother, if you can't help us, then there is no hope for Dayan. I guess we were right. We have no choice but to wager my life. P -p -p Peleus, wait. Just wait. I'm going to tell you something, but you mustn't tell the others. In the Bagnion area, year 626, a terrible plague swept through Dan, killing over a thousand people. Yes, including nearly the entire royal family. Those who had ruled and those destined to do so, none were spared except Ashnard, who ascended the throne in the wake of it all. I've heard that tragic story for as long as I can remember. There was no disease. It was the curse of a blood pact. What? It was all plotted by my husband in a bid to claim the throne of Dan. Ashnard tricked his father into signing a blood pact with a traveling wise man. Ashnard convinced the king that he was signing a contract to procure the services of the wise man, which was true in a fashion. 
With the pact signed, Ashnard had the wise man invoke the curse. My husband looked on in triumph as the royal family began to wither. The power of the curse killed every royal in line for the throne. It was brilliant. With no one to block his way to the throne, Ashnard executed his master stroke. He killed his father and took the crown from his head. What's important is that, after killing his father, Ashnard was not cursed himself. He broke the pact's curse. In order to break the curse of the blood pact, two conditions must be met. The destruction of the document itself, and the death of the one bound to it. Either condition by itself is not enough. I watched it happen. Ashnard killed his father, then tore apart the pact. And before my eyes, the mark of the pact faded from the dead king's arm. The destruction of the document and the death of the one bound? How could you, Almeta? How could you not tell us? You knew all along. Because I was terrified. I knew that once you found out the truth, you would butcher my dear son to save your doomed country. I would rather watch all of day and perish than lose my Peleus. Mother, thank you. Thank you for telling us. It makes my decision much easier. I will save Dan. No, I will not let I won't let you die. You are all that I have left in this world, Peleus. If you only knew how much I've sacrificed for you. I never should have said anything. I can't bear to lose you again, Peleus. Please don't die. I'm sorry, mother, my mind is made up. This is has to happen. Then I shall die as well. I will take my own life if necessary. Mother Kurth? Stop, please. Sister, you must calm down. Sister? Oh, Kurth, don't you understand? I can't feel this way any longer. I do understand, Elmeta. More than you realize. Everyone, as you have heard, there are two conditions to breaking the blood pact. The destruction of the physical document and the death of the pact maker. However, it takes two parties to make a pact. Oh, I see. Yes. Ashnard once told me he'd considered killing the man who created his father's blood pact instead. I don't know why until now. This means that we could kill the senator who signed the pact instead of Sepelius. It's possible, but very difficult. We'll need not only to hunt down the senator, but find the document with no idea where to start. Dan could be annihilated in the time it would take to look. Oh, Kurth, please. Please save my Peleus. I need your help. Help me protect Dan until we get our chance to break the blood pact. I no longer have any power of my own. You're my only hope now, little brother. Please, Kurth. Of course, my dear sister. That is why I came when you called me. I shall protect Dan for you and for Peleus. So please, put your mind at ease. Oh, Kurt, thank you. I'm so sorry for everything I put you and Father through. I'm so sorry. Apostles Army Camp, day in. Sir, I, I've just received a very disturbing message from P Prince Kurthnaga. Don't tell me. No luck, right? It is far worse than that. Prince Kurthnaga has decided to fight for Dayan. What? Why? He, he was supposed to stop them from fighting, and now he wants to fight us instead? Oh, this is just perfect. He has a good reason to side with them, but I'm afraid I cannot tell you why. Wonderful. So we have to fight Dayan? And they've added one of the supposedly neutral dragons of Goldoa to their army. I'm sorry, Ike. I will try to reason with Prince Kurth again. It was the prince's wish to come here. King Degincia knows nothing of this visit. Be that as it may, for a prince of the dragon tribe to stand on a battlefield, it is unacceptable. I must talk him out of it. I'm sorry, Ina. I know you're doing your best to... Wait. Are you talking to him with that stone... How would you know that? You, the question here should be, what are you doing with that stone? Or what's that stone over there? That very interesting. How would he know that she's talking to him with a stone? The sending stone idea has not been given to Ike and to his party. This is not information that they would have knowledge of. So, plot holes and contrivances, yet again... It's almost like he's looking at it like, Ooh, I know that stones are phones in this universe. Yes, we dragons have the power to sense the presence of our allies. If that ally is somewhere we, someone we care for very much, then we can communicate telepathically. With the Sending Stone, we can use this telepathy across extreme distances. I just hope he listens to me. 
We can't afford to fuel the flames of the Fire Emblem. It's almost dawn. Do what you can to convince the Prince to stay out of this. I would have preferred to avoid a fight, but once again, Micaiah isn't giving us much of a choice. I will do my best, Sir Ike. Alrighty. Ah, uh, I see. Then you secure it right here and there. It's finished. Yeah, Shinon, you're the greatest. I'm so proud that you're my teacher. Oh, come on, Rolf. Don't make my puppy eyes at me. What? But it's true. You're really amazing. Cut it out, kid. You exaggerate too much. Are you going to sell this one to Amy again? Can I come along, please? I'm not selling this one. What? But, oh, I got it. You're going to use it for yourself. Then can I fight alongside you? I want you to teach me that trick where you shoot them in the neck and then... We can talk about that later. Here, this is for you. Go on, take it. But this is... You've been running around camp with that silly grin plastered on your face. But I can tell all the fighting's wearing you down. I can't help you get a good night's sleep or make you eat your vegetables. But I can see that you're using a decent bow. Shinon. I don't know why we're fighting this stinking war, but I ain't about to die like a dog. And I know you're too young to be pushing up daisies. But I... What's your problem, kid? I can't possibly pay you back for it. A great bow like this, what can I do? You taught me how to shoot a bow, how to make a bow, and that's not all. You've given me so much, and yet there's nothing I can do to pay you back for it. Of all the stupid... Ouch! Quit whining at me. Ow! You don't have to hit me that hard with that bow. Did I ever ask you to pay me back? Did I ever tell you my help had strings any ta attached? No. Kids should be kids and just learn from their elders. But... If you want to pay me back, then be better than me. Doesn't matter if it's using a bow or making one, just do it better. Then I can point at you and tell people, that's the best student I ever had. Shinon. I look after you because you have talent. I like watching you, kid. I like watching you shoot better every single day, you know? But if someone sticks an arrow in your eye, I ain't gonna have any way to pass the time. So stay sharp, you hear? Fine. Thanks, Master. I'll do my best to surpass you, I swear. Master. I think I like the sound of that. Keep listening to me and you'll be alright. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I am talking about. Shinon. His... Wow, we got uh, all of the royal knights, by the way. Except for Alincia, I believe. This is what I'm talking about. Shinon has so much character development in this game. And it is honestly a sickening shame to me. That he is not even a main character. Not even really remotely close. You barely see him in the story beyond, what, like chapter... 7, I think it is, of Path of Radiance. And then there's like one instance in the story where you see him again. And, you know, there's obvi obviously some support and some info here and there, but it's so very few and far between. He has such a good character development, and you've got someone like Ike, who's as bland as bland can be. With that being said, however, I have a lot of managing to take care of, so I'm going to do that and bid you all a moment's rest. And welcome back. Not too much had to be done, but a little bit here and there. The Apostle's army has left the castle. All right, order all units to stand by until they encounter the enemy forces. Everyone, there is still hope for Dan. We are the key to that hope, but first we must win this battle. Why are you still here? You must return to the Apostle's army before the battle begins. That army has enough troops. I think you could use some help on your side. Rayson and Lien both fight for the people they love. I shall do the same. Even if that means fighting against them, I shall fight for Dayan on your behalf. Thank you both. It means a lot to me. But are you sure? After all, this seems like a hopeless battle. It's too soon for you to give up hope. You have the Dragon Prince of Goldo on your side. That counts for something. Kurth is the Prince of Goldoa? So he is a Legoose? Not just a Legoose, he is a Black Dragon. 
The Black Dragons are the strongest of all the Legu's tribes. We have a chance. If Queen Almada's brother is a Black Dragon, that means the Queen herself must also be a Legu's. Seems like a complicated mess to me. Just the same. He is a powerful ally. You're right. If we can stand our ground, there will be hope for another day. Each day that Dayan arrives, it survives as another day will have earned it. Onward, my brothers. Hold nothing back. We must end this battle quickly. Whoa, that's a problem, huh, guys? It looks like Prince Raphael is fighting for the other side. What do we do now? It is his choice. We can't do anything about it. Well, his choice or not, it makes things a lot more complicated for us. He has sided with our enemies. Has he lost his mind, my dear stupid brother? Prince, what are you doing here? What about the medallion? Weren't you supposed to be? Leanne is watching over it now. Either we convince Raphael to come back to our side, or we drag his unconscious backside over here. Got that? Yes, your majesty. Prince Krithnaga. What will you do now, Ina? Are you going over to the other side too? King de Gincia has expressly forbidden us from choosing sides. The dragon tribe must not fight. I shall attempt to stop the prince. Do what you need to. Just be careful out there, alright? Yes, Sir Ike. Valencia, please stay back. If a chance for a peace talk arises, I want you to mediate the whole show. I understand. Please be safe. Okay, everyone, get moving. Let's get this mess over with. Time to choose units. Obviously, Rayson is going to be brought. Danved as well. None of these guys. No, thank you. Uh, Mist, of course. Titania. And Har. I could bring Heather. The only reason why I would dare do such a thing is because there is a very important and unique hidden item in this chapter. Right here in this space is the one and only obtainable rescue staff in this game, unless in a previous chapter you happen to steal it using the disarm strategy. Otherwise, you're not really getting another one. Um, reposition, car, you don't need to be out front. This is perfect. I think everything is going as planned. And I am going to save. And begin the fight. Ike with his beautiful Ragnell. He literally only needs two experience points and he is... Did I bring Sigrun or was she force deployed? I think she was force deployed. Um, I'm definitely not using Sigrun. She may not be bad, but she's definitely not what I would call whom I want to use. Alright, Silencer. So this is the bow that you have obtained. It is an A rank bow with 16 might, 100 hit. It is very good. And you would think that it would be endgame worthy. Just you wait. <laughs> Some of the bows that you get a hold of later on really put that weapon to shame. And I should say particularly one bow. So, the point of this chapter, as you saw in the upper right-hand corner, that number was a 0. Now it is a 1. This is a route chapter, but it's actually a little bit in more interesting than that. So, it is only a route chapter in the sense that you're only supposed to KO so many enemies. However, the fact of the matter is, is anybody who dies on any team goes towards that number. I believe once you hit 75 totally dead units you just it, it's just over the chapter is done and here's Kurth Naga the dragon prince 
the ebon breath of a black dragon that never runs out and cannot be unequipped or dropped. This is the first time we are seeing a dragon in Radiant Dawn. And do you happen to see the range on his weapon? One to two range. Please do alert to me as to why it is this could not have been the thing in Path of Radiance. Now all of his stats are doubled upon transformation just like any other Legus except for luck. So he's going to have 30 strength, 30 defense, 30 resistance, 20 speed, 16 skill, and 14 magic. Um, I'm not trying to be a mean guy here, but I'm almost certain that Nyla could one round him transform. So I don't think he is the big deciding factor here. Increases the defense and resistance of adjacent allied units by five. So every single dragon type in this game has a certain tide. Or in the case of the white uh, dragons, it's white pool. There's night tide and blood tide. Those, these are all some of the best abilities in the entire game. And they are very rare, very few and far between. They don't seem like they would be that big of a deal, but they stack, which is notable. All right, uh, you can stay back here and pretend to do something. Um, Ike, I'm going to chant you. And then I'm going to gladly fight you. And that's Ike's final level before promotion. An okay one. You know, nothing fantastic, if I'm being honest. All right. And that is my turn, finished. Now it is time for the enemies to take their turn. Humorous, that was. Um, he did do quite a lot of damage to Raisin. That would have not been funny had he actually died from that. But he could not have unless uh, the enemy could have crit. And that's also not likely because Raisin has a billion avoid and a billion luck but yeah this is one of those chapters that is excruciatingly long in in an unfortunate way nice soul proc that's going to give me 5 hp amazing Yeah, so even with, even with my good old units being third tier, everybody you're fighting is still pretty well around the strength level. I like how he just pavised. Um, pretty well around the strength level that your units would be. I mean, of course, the enemies are still just a tad bit weaker, but it's the fact that Radiant Dawn scales its units much more harshly than just about any other game in the series. I think the only one that can come to my mind is actually Fire Emblem 11 and 12. Those two games, on their hardest of difficulties, overscale, even more so than Radiant Dawn does, which is not a bad thing. Um, sometimes it's, you know, what has to happen in order to get, provide that difficulty thing is it's like even if i ever do happen to play shadow dragon now i don't think i'll ever get around to playing new mystery because i am just not big on the whole avatar worship however if i do happen to play shadow dragon what is likely going to happen is i will probably either play on hard one or normal most likely hard one i i I do enjoy the hard difficulties of that game, but to an extent, they are more tedious than they are necessarily worth playing for me. That doesn't mean that they're bad 
for anybody to play. I've enjoyed them. I even have beaten that game on Hard Five, but buddy, that was that was tough and rough. It required because I don't have peculiar, you know, perfect strategies. It required some arena abuse and some of my units to be overpowered a bit, and I just didn't like that. Especially because at the time I was not the fondest of always using the effective weaponry to win that game. Now I do know, obviously. Shadow Dragon's pretty much effective weaponry the game. So there is that to take into account. I can I will definitely play that game one of these days. I love Shadow Dragon. Uh, all this chaos. I can barely see straight. Yeah, that's one of the other things that's about this chapter. So, as you progress through the number of enemies that need to be KO'd, certain of your units have, like, little events, and there's even actual map-wide events, or story-wide events, I should say, that's more accurate. Ike no longer needs experience points, but that doesn't mean I'm going to be fully holding him back, because the thing is, is that uh, I need him to do stuff as well. I was actually kind of hoping for a soul there. I will Galger for you, Mist. So that Mist can actually just heal up Racin. I think that's a fantastic idea. Uh, that level that he just got was not so fantastic. I'm gonna be very real. Um, he still has quite a few stats that could be maxed out, and he's kind of nowhere near necessarily maxing them out, so a shame. Damaging Shinon. Who do you think you are? Alright. Taking on a sniper with a hand axe. You wouldn't think that this should be a good idea, but it surely is. And of course, I'm going to use the Steel Sword here just to get some uh, good damage on a weapon that's not necessary. I can go here. I think. Yeah, so Zhark can reach. And that is my turn. Ah, yes. The good old sleep staves. I don't remember if I even have a restore on me. You don't need to have a restore, though, in the Tellius games. And I'm about to show you why. This is actually a perfect thing here. I do not think I've ever been able to show this off in... Path of Radiance, or, well, in either of my Path of Radiance playthroughs. There's no time to dwell on our sorrow. Very strange. He could have attacked Rayson. Which wouldn't have mattered to me, because actually, um, Rayson's gaining gauge by these folks attacking him. And that means that he's ever closer to the ability to transform, and that's what I want. What's also kind of strange is that these guys are attacking Titania when Ike is literally just sitting there doing literally nothing. Imagine running up to some guy 
with a lance. He's sleeping, and you go to stab him, and you do, like, next to no damage. Imagine that. Still no word from the battle? What's going on out there? I should go to my people. They need me. Hey, just where do you think you're going? Do you think the high and mighty apostle should be traipsing around a battlefield, hmm? What? Oh, it's just you. Hmm. How dare you sneak up on me that way. That beauty from the holy gods told me to keep an eye on you. So, do me a favor and sit still, will you? But I can, can't see anything from here. I have to know how my people are faring down there. I, I, I can't bear doing nothing. Hmm. I have an idea. You, carry me to a place where I can observe the battle. Don't give me that look. You're the one who agreed to guard me, so do your duty and obey your orders. Come on, let's get moving. Wait a minute. Is that what passes for Bjork logic these days? No wonder you've lost your throne. Ow, stop that. Are you going to obey me, or shall I have, have you chased back home in a cloud of feathers? By the blinker. What have I got myself into? As you wish, Empress. My back is yours. Nesala hanging out with Sanaki? Who would have figured that one? So yes, you do have a very limited window to gain that rescue staff, and though it's not impertinent, it's not like something I absolutely have to have. Did I just say impertinent? That's not what I meant. Uh, it's not something that I absolutely have to have, but I will try to get it if I can. 19 KOs already. Well, this is about to be 20. I don't think there's a single character on this entire map right now who would survive to barn. Yep, and this is about to be 21. So you definitely don't have to do all the KOing here. It can happen to any of the green armies. It can happen to the your own army, in fact. And it would still count towards that. And I think that's the last of the green unit turn. Perfect. Raisin is very close to transforming. However, with that being said, this is a wondrous and glorious opportunity for me to bid you all a farewell. As this episode can only have so much time allotted to it, I want to thank you for joining me. If you like my content, please upvote and follow, or like and subscribe depending on your platform. And while you're at it, have a great and glorious day gaming.